This video is brought to you in part by Squarespace. For quite some time, the resident female member of the Sonic cast has been overlooked in terms of her mainline hero status. But through 2023, we have seen Sega make a greater effort to bring her to the forefront by revitalizing her status as a playable character and finally getting a super form for a couple months at least. But on top of that, she finally has herself a metal duplicate in her 25th anniversary year, no less, shared with the icon Metal Sonic. This is Metal Amy, designed by none other than Kazuyuki Hoshino, the original designer of Metal Sonic. I've seen a lot of different opinions about this bot, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I absolutely adore it. Captures the adorable nature of Amy while mixing in those iconic metal elements, ringed red eyes and a mouthless muzzle. Even she sharing Metal Sonic's crescent quills. And I love that Eggman even went out of his way to represent her eyelashes in that robot visor. Big eyelashes are the universal cartoon sign for females. Just so everyone's clear, this robot is a girl. And unlike Metal Sonic, who always has half of his pupils covered, giving him more of a serious and angry look, being able to see all the red in Metal Amy's eyes does give this more of an innocent look slightly the red color still makes it kind of creepy but like maybe this robot won't rip you apart she doesn't even have sharp pointy digits like metal sonic in fact it looks like eggy went out of his way to design this robot to more closely resemble the fleshy counterpart compared to what all the boys got the paint deco even matches her outfit there's even little white pieces representing socks around her metal feet but apparently there's a bit of content over what color her torso is supposed to be. We have seen pink in trailers, but her concept art shows us green that honestly probably is what the original design was intended to be. It only gets confusing because you can customize the robot in the game. The standout feature would have to be the robotic version of Amy's dress. Unlike the other robots with intakes and jets pointing out the back, Metal Amy seems to have jets all around the skirt, which leads me to believe that this robot might be a little more maneuverable when airborne. Like, maybe this helps match Amy's double jump ability. I wonder if this robo skirt is designed to twirl around, giving it something of a UFO or Gamera look. Now, we don't see any of that animated in the game. This robot does the exact same thing as every other prototype or battle bot and superstars. But I still believe there was purpose put into this design. I say that because originally I thought she would be the one one robot without an air intake for those jets, but I think we can actually see that in her head, in the spot that represents the real Amy's bangs. I appreciate these little details in the design, because we can get a clear picture of how she was meant to move. Of course, you can argue that this was never the intention if you just look at superstars. She is technically animated in the battle mode and that boss fight in Cyber Station, and yes, while those abilities abilities on display show us a formidable robot. It is a shame that all this design kind of goes to waste. There's nothing unique that she does on her own. And in turn, outside of the design that Superstars has given us, in terms of action, I don't think the game is a great spot for a deeper character analysis. I mean, you can make Mecha Sonic Mark 1 do all of these things too, and we know that robot is not designed for flying or energy projection. Metal Amy, like every other robot in battle mode, is simply a skin. Interchangeable parts, but with the same core robot under the surface. So, the design is all we have to work with, which isn't much, but this is not the only robot double of Amy Rose. Turns out there are quite a few we can look at, and to my happy surprise, all of them are awesome. Except for the only other time an Amy bot appeared in the core games, and I'm not even sure this counts, but I am of course speaking of the Amy doll that briefly appeared in Sonic Mania. And while I did just sound dismissive of this thing, I actually think this is a really clever bot design. Not only is this a lovely callback to the Tails doll, I'd say a doll copy is probably more appropriate for classic Amy. Yes, both of the cuter characters get creepy doll doubles, but the Amy doll doesn't have the same
same haunted history of its twin-tailed counterpart. That said, in terms of game canon, the Amy doll is technically more threatening than the Tails doll. See, creepy as the Tails doll can be, it might surprise some of you to learn that it's never actually attacked or harmed anyone in the game series. Even now that we have the IDW comics canon to the games, the doll has never actively attacked anyone. And that is not the case for the Amy doll, or should I say Amy dolls, as it runs towards the player and then self-destructs upon contact. And that's extremely fitting for classic Amy's characterization, as she originally just latched onto Sonic's side when she was first introduced in Sonic CD. The Amy of old always smothered Sonic with unwelcome affection, and I think that idea is perfectly captured in this deadly doll. Of course, outside of that, we do have plenty of other robot doubles found in the pages of Fleetway and Archie. Some of them actually help me better understand the lore and canon they come from, and others give me some inspiring ideas I hope we see in the future. For Sonic the Comic, we have two instances of Amy bots, both of them badniks designed to house the actual Amy Rose. The first one appears only very briefly and is destroyed before it is ever allowed to function, but this did give me my first real indication of how badniks work in this canon. I have read some stories featuring badniks before, but reading this issue showed me that the rules do fluctuate a little bit. Unlike the Sonic badnik, which we have covered before, this robot cannot function without Amy Rose serving as its battery, and on top of that, this Amy badnik shell is designed to control Amy herself as she says, when she's captured and put into the robot, that she can feel the badnik programming beginning to take control of her mind. So this is kind of a mix between the classic game badnik with an animal serving as a battery and Archie and Sad Am's robotization, where the animal person is turned from flesh to metal. So it's like an evil Iron Man suit, which is pretty cool. If we never see it in action, which probably was for the best as this was a prototype super badnik, apparently once the animal was installed into this particular type of robot, the process could never be reversed. So Amy was just saved from a spring trap situation. Yeah, I know a couple of naff things. I'm hip. I'm with it. Now for the super badnik's design, this is just a silver Amy with a bad attitude and sharp angles added to her design. Kind of gives me Zonic or Mechasonic Mark 1 vibes, but instead of a buzzsaw haircut, she has buzzsaws for hands. It's not a very inspired design, but it was made to last one single page, so I get it. And even with that said, I still kind of like it. At least the hairdo. Closest we're probably ever going to get to a proper Super Amy hairstyle. Oh well. But this wouldn't be the only time we would see an Amy Badnik in Fleetway. And unfortunately for the Pink Hedgehog, this time it would take control. And oh my god, is this design nuts. This is about as Fleetway as things get. This is a wild look. I'd assume because this isn't a Robotnik Badnik. This was made by Commander Brutus, who, okay, to be fair, was made by Robotnik. But this robot would go on to rebel against its creator. And then Brutus would go on to create his own army of badniks, one of which included Amy's badnik shell. Like the super badnik, this one seems to have direct control of Amy as opposed to being a separate robot entity simply powered by an organic battery. Like robotization, this would directly tap into the latent abilities of its host, as we can see with this version of the badnik, Amy. The Fleetway version of Amy Rose uses a crossbow, so the badnik version in turn has gauntlets that fires arrows, utilizing Amy's sharpshooting skill set. I'm honestly surprised the main game canon never took the badnik idea in this direction. This is a smart middle ground between a badnik and the scariest parts of roboticizing someone. You keep the standard badniks for flickies and other small animals, but also have specialized super badniks meant to house the more powerful heroes that Eggman has to face. And hey, it's a great way to mess with Sonic, forcing him to fight his friends, as we see here in this story where he's forced to take on badnik Amy. He's worried about going all out because he doesn't want to hurt her, which doesn't make a lot of sense because I just read a story where he wrecked a badnik Amy while the real Amy was inside and he didn't seem to have a problem with that. And doesn't he wreck badniks all the time? They all have living creatures inside them. Is he just not worried about messing those critters up? I guess that would explain Sky Chase. Oh God, Zada got the turtle. Well, 
story contrivances, and I guess arrows aren't as deadly as quills, as Sonic solves the issue by sending Bad Nick Amy's shots right back at her, destroying the shell and saving the real deal. I, I don't see how that's any more clever. It's fine. Whatever. Who cares? I do like the concept of the Super Bad Nicks more than I like their designs. But like I said, I don't hate how these two robots look either. The second Bad Nick Amy has a wild look, at least in the face. It's almost alien, representing the stripping of Amy's humanity, and the gauntlets are a cool touch. The rest of the designs, whatever, but there is a lot of creativity in the face at least. But hey, we're not done with Amy bots, because it's modern Amy's turn as we move over to Archie. In issue 240, we see the deployment of Team Metal, and of course, this includes Metal Amy. Sure, this isn't canon to the games, but this is the first official Sonic material to feature any version of Metal Amy. And while I feel a lot of the basic features of the bot are a little uninspired, the hairstyle is just Amy's hairstyle except angrier, I guess. It's got a couple more angles. It's like a low poly design that they grabbed off of Sonic Adventure. I don't know. There's no function to those bangs. Actually, I gotta admit, I really, really don't like that this bot has bangs. I know this sounds like a weird thing to complain about, but bangs represent hair, loose hair, that makes the fleshy version of Amy feel like a living, breathing creature. That should not be on one of the metal designs. I know this is not something I complain about with the Fleetway Badniks, but those robots aren't trying to replicate the iconic robot from the game series. One of the major reasons I love the original Metal Sonic design is because there really isn't much on that bot that's arbitrary or pointless. It's not trying to impersonate Sonic, it's trying to match and surpass Sonic's core abilities. Metal Sonic is distilled down to exactly what it needs to be to perform its function as efficiently as possible, and that takes some clever design both in the fiction for Eggman and for the real world design for the character. That's why I like the use of the bangs on Metal Amy in Superstars. There's still a point to those bangs, and I like that they're even pulled back for a more aerodynamic design, and also still serves as an intake for the dress jets. There's no accounting for the eyelashes, I'll admit, and it's still not my favorite robot design, but like I said, there's still intent behind the little details of this robot, and I appreciate that. But all that considered, Archie's Metal Amy does have some really cool ideas that I would love to see if they ever made a modern version of Metal Amy. The dress is just one big rocket. This robot has no legs, she just blasts around. So they do justify the dress in the design and it visually stands out from every other metal. And this version of Metal Amy also has gauntlets that swap out the metal hands for hammers. Not only utilizing Amy's hammer abilities, but doubling up on the weaponry as well. That's really cool. Honestly, if they just touched up those other little elements, you'd have a truly iconic robot that could match the real Amy Rose. Unfortunately, that's not a fight we ever see as Metal Amy would be taken out in the very same issue she was introduced after Silver and Big team up to take down the robot. A dramatically short legacy and... That's a shame too. As much as I whined about the bangs, I really thought those hammer hands were inspired. And I think Ian Flynn and the comic team were proud of the idea as well because we would see them again. While Metal Amy was gone, after Eggman and Dr. Wily teamed up in that first crazy Sonic and Mega Man crossover, we would see the Mad Doctors combine their genius to create the roboticized masters, one of which included Rose Woman. This is the only time we'd see a roboticized Amy Rose, and like the other robot masters, she would have heavy Mega Man influence in the design, with those big meaty boots and a faceplate instead of a metal muzzle, and her hands are just hammers. No swapping them out. I gotta say, the combined Sonic and Mega Man style is pretty solid. It's giving me some major Super Mario Bros. Z Metallics vibes. I don't want to delve too much into Rose Woman right now, and spoilers for every other robot double we're going to be covering soon. I'm only going to give him a brief mention, because I want to wait till we talk about the crossover proper in Sonic Speed Reading before we deep dive their narrative function. And trust me, if you haven't read Worlds Collide, you are seriously missing out. Go track it down. Sonic Boom gives the entire cast a couple of robot doubles, depending on where you look. We got Cyber Amy, which we have kind of covered in a previous video, and there is an Amy bot made by Tails in Sonic Boom Ice and Fire. But like I said, there's really nothing standout about either creation. But this wasn't the only Sonic cartoon to feature a robotic version of Amy. And this one is currently the most 
well known of any of these Amy bots. I'm of course speaking of Sonic Prime's Rusty Rose. I know she's more kind of a cyborg version of Amy, but come on, it'd be weird if I didn't mention her in this video. Since this is just an alternate version of Amy, she does look more like the actual Amy Rose than any of the other robots we've talked about today. Except Rusty wears shutter glasses, or like half a pair, so like a shutter monocle, I guess? And as much as I've whined about Robo Bangs, I do like that these ones have a buzzsaw quality, and her hairdo now sits on her head like a helmet. And from the neck down, the rest of her body is just straight up robot. Hardy and clearly battle-worn. This bot has done some terrible things in the name of the Chaos Council. As you can imagine, this version of Amy is cold, detached, and, well, robotic. But she still was a standout fan-favorite character in those first batch of episodes. This is one of those rare times we got to see Amy be a complete badass, giving our heroes a lot of trouble. And when reprogrammed, she proved to be a powerful ally, right up until she wasn't. But then she decided to be good again, and I'm also pretty sure she's got a crush on herself. Well, hey girl, if you ever want to win Sonic's heart, you got to learn to love yourself first, right? Or something. Anyway, all that aside, there is something I don't see enough fans talking about. This show deals with alternate dimensions, and while most are silly pirate or jungle nonsense, the universe from which Rusty Rose originates from is a direct result of Sonic just never existing in this primary universe, implying that Rusty Rose was, at some point, just normal Amy Rose. And on top of that, her little birdie companion they established early on in the show now functions as her organic battery. This is dark enough on its own, and I will admit a clever callback to the core idea of a Batnik, but this is made even worse if you're familiar with the history of Amy's character, especially in Sonic Adventure, where she was the catalyst in saving not only her little birdie buddy, but also the little flicky that resided within Gamma. Now, in this timeline, Amy herself uses a little flicky in the same way. And this is never addressed again, by the way. They show this tortured little bird in her chest, and just carry on with the series. I mean, we do have another batch of episodes coming soon, and I wouldn't be surprised if they show the bird flying off. But as of this video, season three isn't out yet. And even then, this bird has clearly been through a lot. And speaking of those last episodes, it's clear we are also getting a Chaos Amy. Maybe we'll see Rusty Rose take on that robot. That'd be pretty awesome. But yeah, there you go. That's a surprising amount of Amy robots. A lot more than I expected, but even after all of those are listed, it's only now we have a mainline game canon metal Amy. And she's not even the most popular Amy robot out there. Rusty Rose has action figures after all. Oh, and hey, fun little thing I just thought of. While metal Amy doesn't have Pico hammer hands, something I do love about the Archie version of the robot, since you can customize the robot and superstars, you can at least give her a hammer arm if you so desire. Granted, it's not the Pico hammer. I think it's more of a callback to that Sonic 2 Eggmobile hammer. And you also get a drill, but whatever, it's still cute. Before we wrap up for today, I want to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Jumping online and building up your own brand was always an intimidating thing for me, but Squarespace makes that a streamlined, fast, and easy process, all while making you look good thanks to their Fluid Engine, a next generation web website design tool that lets you tweak any of their many, many templates with easy to use drag and drop tools. And I don't need to tell you how useful websites can be, whether you want to build up a portfolio of your work, an art gallery, or a shop, because yes, they have everything you need to run your own online business, including analytics that help show you the strongest avenues of growth and help you build up marketing strategies, which include integration with your favorite social media networks. And they can even help you set up an online online shop to sell and distribute custom merch. All you have to do is design it and they'll handle production, inventory, and shipping. Really doesn't get any easier than that. And to make it just a bit easier, if you use my link, squarespace.com slash gameapologist, you'll get 14 days for free, which is plenty of time to see if this is right for you. And when you want to make a purchase, that same link will get you 10% off your first order. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring the 
video. And before I go, I have to give a huge shout out to everyone who supports the channel. Thank you guys so much, especially the people over on Patreon, including these fine folks here. Kyle Winter, Cirrus the Skeptic, Joseph Duncan Sonic 2 Blue is someone I'm super jealous of because deep down I secretly love the color blue more than the color blue. Your Patreon only gets you so far. Don't push it. John, Josh Strider, Mecha Monroe, Hatsworth, Tiny Jericho, Ginger Bob, Jack of All Spades, Tristan Trap, Meekers, Dun Dun Quote, Resident Fanboy, Miles the Prower, Singer J199, Sam Webster, Fishflop, Lucas Lipker, The Bad Pal, Jonathan Dobbs, Chad, Super Hyper Mecha SP Mark II, Cecil the Gallade, The Dark Neon, Stefan Placonica, Three Monic, Ty Cyan, Graham J. Hall, Lenny X, Wayne is Boss, Lederick, someone who can make video games but not sure if allowed to say what it is, but anyway, when are you doing a video on Grim Crisis? What's Grim Crisis? Is that your game? That's a cool name. Jimmy Duke STR, The Lumberjack, Trash Baphomet, Autumn from Twitter.com, Enerjack5, Spades the Nocturne, Ken K of Warheads, Ven101, Paxton Bisbee, Sendarin7, Deck. <laughs> oh god. Twilord, Spider-Man 2 is still a week away. I'm never updating my name. Oh wait, never. <laughs> <laughs> Paisley, Eric Delgado, Sayonara Robocop, Crimson Rose. I really want to talk about the Spider-Man games. Like for real, Spider-Man 2 was just Spider-Man 3, but good, right? Like Web of Shadows. Just do a video about that. It's just, ugh good game. Nix the Kobold, Sonic PAJ, and really that was like a really quick platinum too, right? Like it took me a while to actually sit down and play the game. Like I said, I've been sick and busy and all this other crap, but I finally sat down, played through the game, had a good time, but like I got everything done in a weekend. That's one of the easiest platinums I've ever gotten. Moonascent, Roxas the Cat, Godzilla, Makuta of Salt, this power is like a scam, Alexander Watson, Neil Gampa, Conan Kudo, the Lex, the most powerful ship in the two universes. And like, I don't want to spoil anything, but like a lot of Ultimate Spider Man mixed in there as well. I really wish they didn't patch out that one thing I can't talk about. Native Nerd 27, Kaido Prower, Swift Cannon, Spearmint, Omega Man 21, Pen Adelaide, The Phantomist, Silver Stars, Daza S, The World's Most Unironic Eight and a Half Tails Stand. And like, for real, like we know what the DLC is going to be, right? Like they have to use that character. They have to. One more Sonic Robot. SP is currently undergoing an identity crisis, so he created Evil Clone SP. MT Mecha, Yasai, Gob, Charles the Green Dragon. Boten here to remind everyone that Manity. <coughs> Oh god, this cough is back. That manatees are awesome. Like, I love the game, don't get me wrong, and I don't think anyone was overblowing just how stupid Miles' new costume was. I, that was terrible. Genuinely awful. And spoilers, the 19 inches of Venom never happens. That never happens. Not like that. Certainly not like that. You gotta calm down with all those stupid costumes, Insomniac. Anyway, still a better black suit than that stupid crap from Spider-Man 3. <laughs>